हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एनालिसिस ऑफ इनडिटरमिनेट ट्रसेस नाउ व्हाट डू यू मीन बाय इनडिटरमिनेट ट्रस आई हैड मेड अ ट्रस हियर इफ इन अ ट्रस द अननोन फोर्सेस कैन नॉट बी डिटरमाइंड बाय द थ्योरी ऑफ इक्विलिब्रियम अननोन देन दैट ट्रस इज नोन एज इनडिटरमिनेट ट्रस नाउ आई हैड मेड अ ट्रस हियर at support a there will be two reactions acting like this and at support b there will be two reaction acting like this now if we find here the degree of external static indeterminacy then its formula will be equals to r minus s now we have four external reactions so we just write the value of r as 4 and we know that in case of trusses the equilibrium condition will be equals to 3 so its value will be 3 now if you solve r minus s then the total external static indeterminacy will be equals to 1 it means that we are not able to find all the four reactions by the equilibrium conditions alone so that this truss will be an indeterminate truss okay now for the analysis of indeterminate truss i had made a problem here in which support a is hinge support b is roller support okay now the length of vertical member is 4 meter and all the horizontal members is of 4 meter length and at joint e there will be 10 kN force acting in the downward direction similarly at f there will be a 10 kN force acting at the downward direction now from the observation we need to find the degree of external static indeterminacy now we know that at support a there will be two reaction acting like this and at support b there will be only one reaction acting like this so if we want to find the total external static indeterminacy then its formula will be equals to r minus s here r will be equals to 3 because three external reaction will be acting on this truss okay so the value of r is 3 and we know that in case of truss the value of s or the number of equilibrium condition will be equals to 3 so the total external static indeterminacy will be equals to 0 now the total external static indeterminacy will be equals to 0 now we need to find the internal static indeterminacy for finding the internal static indeterminacy we know the formula that is m minus 2j minus 3 okay now here in this stress the total members are 10 and the total number of joints will be 6 now after putting all this value we will get the internal static indeterminacy equals to 1 it means that the structure or the truss is statically determined by 1 degree so this is an indeterminate truss and its internal indeterminacy is 1 okay now the conclusion is written here that the structure is internally indeterminate by 1 degree now we have to see how we can analyze the indeterminate truss okay now step 1 is the select any redundant member and replace it by x axial force in any direction okay now we have to select any redundant force in the truss and replace it by x that is axial force in any direction okay now one note is there that always select a member about which the truss is symmetric here the truss is symmetric about cd member so we will remove the cd member and replace it by x axial force in the tension direction or in the tensile direction okay now remove x force and convert the truss into determinate truss to find p values now we have to remove the x force which is shown here okay now after removing the x force the truss will become a determinate truss now we have to find the p values which we had calculated similar in the analysis of determinate truss okay now we will determine all the p values suppose that there will be 10 kN load acting at joint e and f due to which the support reaction will be 10 and 10 now due to this 10 and 10 force at support b there will be 10 kN force acting in the member bd in tension or tensile direction as well as in member bf 10 root 2 force will be acting in the compression direction okay or towards the joint similarly in b in df member there will be a 10 kN force which is acting in the towards the joint direction so it will be a compressive force similarly in de there will be a 10 root 2 force which is acting away from the joint so it is a tensile force similarly in member ef there will be a 
20 kN force which is acting towards the joint that's why it is a compressive force now in member C there will be a 10 kN force which is acting towards the joint so it will also be a compressive force similarly in member AC there will be a 10 kN force which is acting away from the joint so it will be a tensile force and in the member A there will be a compressive 10 root 2 force okay now in this way we had determined all the p values now remove all the external loading and apply unit load in place of x for finding the k values now we have to remove all the external loading and we have to apply in place of x by 1 kN to determine the k values now after determining the k values that is Suppose that at C joint there will be a 1 kN force acting in the horizontal direction. Similarly at D there will be a 1 kN force acting in the horizontal direction. Now due to this 1 kN load at D what will happen? The joint D will tries to move towards the left direction. To keep this joint in the equilibrium condition we need to make or produce a force in the rightward direction for which the force in the member ED will be root 2 in the compression direction or towards the joint okay now due to this root 2 force in the member d what will happen the joint d will tries to move in the downward direction by one magnitude force okay now we need to create an upward force so that this joint will become stable or will be in equilibrium for which we need to make a force in the member df in the upward direction or away from the joint in this similar way we can determine the forces in each and every joint of the trusses now after finding the k values what will happen we need to make a table where we have to write the p forces k forces member length and we need to multiply all these three values that is pkl as well as k square l now we just write them all the member that is ac bd ae ef fb cf de ec and fd now p values which we had determined in the first case now from where we had taken the p values and plus sign is for tensile force and negative sign is for compression forces now in the second case when we had removed all the external loading and replaced the x by 1 kN we had determined the k values so we will write here the k values okay now we have the length of each and every member so we just write the length of each and every member by multiplying p into k into l we can determine the pkl value which is written in this column similarly by multiplying k square into l we can determine the k square l value and it will be written in this column now the summation of total pkl will be equals to minus 386.27 and summation of k square l will be equals to 34.6 now if you want to determine the forces in each member then it will be equals to p plus kx now you just add this p plus k into x okay you will get the value of each and every member now we need to determine the x value here now for the determination of x what will be the formula its formula will be equals to minus ratio of summation of pkl upon summation of k square l we had determined the summation of pkl value it will be equals to minus 386.27 so we had write the minus 386.27 here and we had write the k square l value that is 34.6 now after finding the x value which will be equal to 11.16 kN you have to put the k value here in each and every member and you can determine the forces in each member. Now in this way we will determine or we will analyze the indeterminate truss. The truss is analyzed by simple method and we can determine each and every member force in an indeterminate truss by applying just a simple equation that is summation of pkl upon summation of k square l with negative sign okay in this way we had solved the analysis of indeterminate truss thank you very much students